Hello, welcome to the last end of your video, not vlog, video. Um, I am pretty sure this is the same dress I wore last year, but it's the nicest red thing I have. I have two dogs in my room, so like, do with them as you will. Um, this one is going to be my 10 favorites of 2023 as of noon on Tuesday, the 12th of December. Okay, um, I have so far had one five star read that wasn't a reread. Uh, this does not include rereads. So, this month in December, so like, do that as you will. Um, but I don't foresee any of the other ones being so great that they'll knock out any of the ones on the list, right? So, it's fine, it's fine. Um, these are all five stars. <laughs> Remember last year when a lot of them had four and a half star books? Like, I really loved a lot of the four and a half star books that I read this year, but I read more five star books, uh, ever before <laughs> this year. I love it. I'm trying to read 50 total. I'm kind of close, kind of not, uh, by the end of the year. I don't think it's gonna happen because I have a lot of other things I need to do as well. So I'm putting those things before that, but you know, whatever. Um, and yeah, I think that's it for the intro of this. I'm just gonna go into it. Uh, these are in like no particular order. If I have two different graphics for my favorites, um, and whatnot, uh, there's the one that has the book covers that is no specific order. It's just my favorites of each month. Um, some of them are rereads. Again, none of these are gonna be rereads. Uh, those just happen to be months where any book that wasn't a reread got three stars or lower. So instead, of rereads got the favorite. Um, again, <laughs> whoops. Um. And then there's also the one that's like a bracket thing that like competes all the books with each other to find out the favorite. I think we all recognize which is going to get first place. Um, so like, yeah, technically there is a specific order with that, but like, not really because some of the things in the first section of brackets, uh, beat out things in the second section, but like they don't go against each other and whatnot. Um, so like there's no specific order, but like. It makes sense in my brain and like obviously bloodmark has to be first right <laughs> um it got to the point where for my birthday bestie read legendborn and did a whole vlog uh it is my comfort video okay do we see all these tabs i did what happened here what happened here um i pretty sure some read with me this year uh i did annotating this in that um I got to use my new annotation tools I got for myself for January um for a Christmas present and on these and it it's spectacular okay I think we all recognize I love this book I am very upset that I have to wait until 2025 for the third book but I am also very excited that there's confirmed going to be a fourth book okay um so you know good times um I love this. I love Cell. Uh, my version has like the bonus chapter thing that is like an extension of um, basically Cell and Nick's relationship. What it was like for them growing up. Um, and also them having a conversation about how they both have feelings for Brie and it's spectacular. I love this. My birthday present for myself next year is going to be podcast episodes about these. Okay. Um, I did read this for the uh, Arthurian vlog where I read a bunch of Arthurian retellings. Um, I mean, do I have to say anything else? I mean, this is just like my favorite series of all time. Legendborn's like top tier for me. I will love it forever. Um, the end? <laughs> I don't think I have to go more into it. I honestly don't. Um, and yeah, I can't throw this on the bed because there's a dog on the bed and then there's one next to the bed as well. So it's gonna be weird cuts because I lightly place the hard or the well I guess they're all hardcovers but the physical books on the floor. We talked about how my copy has like the shiny uh foil on the cover in the magic. Spectacular. Um second is one came out of left field honestly uh The Secret Lives of Country Gentlemen. This was not planned. This was not in my TBR in any what way uh but I was just scrolling through Libby as one do um on the uh queer section and I found it and I was like hey that looks interesting didn't even realize that in February I read a book by the same author that the queer aspect I actually liked in that one too but um the whole mystery aspect it wasn't a big fan of so like I think I rated that one like 3 or 3.5 um and it was fine 
I uh, didn't realize the same author until after I finished The Secret Life of the Country Gentleman, which is about, <laughs> it's a historical romance uh, where these two guys have a thing for each other, right? Uh, they have a thing where they rendezvous every once in a while um, and do the deed. Um, but uh, one of them has to go away and the other one also has to go away. Tech, it, 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 neither one of them knows the place that they're going away to is the same town um where one of them is the head of basically uh a mafia like kind of family uh and whatnot and there's like a whole bunch of family stuff going on whatnot um and the other one his father recently died and technically he's his heir despite the fact that his father basically never like basically disowned him as soon as his mother died he was like ah oh, you're too emotional about your mother being dead bye <sighs> um so he's never had love he is constantly in need by everyone else um and it's it's so dramatic for what i don't understand why it needs to be so dramatic but it's dramatic um there is hear me out miscommunication but done in a good way because you get both their povs and so you understand why both of them are saying the things they're saying and or misunderstanding what the other one means when they say things right because of their own biases or their thought processes or their history and whatnot because you get both povs and it's done so well and i love it and the way it was out of the blue like this was not planned um anyways it was beautiful i loved it also the cover's great <laughs> um then we have i believe it's the second book in the trilogy the evolution of Mar dyer right um there is a podcast episode about all three and then there's also a finishing series vlog i think it's the first one where i read books two and three in the series um i think there's a part I don't know if it's for the second book or the third book where I uh, record my reaction <laughs> in live time as I'm finishing the book. Um, anyways, uh, I'm not going to go much into it because like Bloodmarked, it's a sequel uh, and whatnot. But <sighs> Team Mardire, she's in the right. Um, I don't know what else to say. I love her. Um, she's an icon uh, and whatnot. It's a good time. I think... Uh, Bessie's very happy that Mardire's on the list. The fish does understand that Bloodmark is gonna beat it in the graphics, in the bracket version, right? So, like, it's fine. They understand it's gonna happen. They're just very happy that Mardire got on the list, okay? Uh, number four, which is a book that my IRL Bestie, uh, gifted me in 2020. Has her initials in it and everything, um, sent to me, or not sent to me, gave to me, 2020 right i'm gonna send it to the fish because uh after i finish these videos um it is going to the fish because i love this so much i was not expecting this okay so this one is a ya sci-fi thriller slash horror right um so basically uh when nasa originally went to space they found something weird in space um and they want to go back and figure out what it is um do some scientific stuff so uh in order to go back monetarily it's a lot of money right so they have two ways to make it so they can get the money to go back one is to say uh there's this really rare metal there uh that they're gonna mine that's a lie two and also set up like these secret bases up there that no one knew about but they're gonna talk about it now um so that they can mine that metal. All that's why. So they can actually secretly learn about the weird things they found on the moon. Second thing is to do a lottery where three teams from anywhere in the world can win a chance to go to the moon um, and whatnot. And that will make a lot of publicity. And that will also earn the money. Um, and so a good chunk of the book, I want to say like a third of the book, is setting up of going to the moon, training, winning the lottery, meeting the three teenagers, all that stuff. It was not slow, but it was definitely not the rest of the book, where as soon as they get on the moon, shit be happening. People instantly die within like hours of them being on the moon, okay? Um, and it is wild and things happen. I literally had to sleep with a nightlight on because of this book. Um, also, <laughs> the ending, how dare this man, okay? Um, anyways, this is great. And it was so unexpected, right? Um, and proof that I do like why horror uh it just has to be done well right uh but yeah I love this also I almost forgot to mention that uh this was in the vlog where the fish picks three random books for me to read from my physical tbr now this is the one from um this month <laughs> uh orbiting jupiter I don't know where 
the dust jacket went. My sister had to read this for high school. It was ninth grade. I think it was the summer before ninth grade. She was 14. I don't believe she should have read this when she was 14. Thank you very much. Um, she is planning to reread it. I had to take it off of her pile of books that she's planning to read soon because uh, I want to talk about it in this. Um, yeah, this is good. I There's a, like a brand new podcast episode for this, okay? Um, what not good things yeah <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that um I literally cried like I was trying not to make it obvious that I was crying while retelling the ending of this book I was sobbing when a book makes me sob that's how you know it's good okay um this book is good it's about Jack and Joseph um Joseph is the new foster kid um Jack's family or parents used to foster a lot of kids uh and whatnot before he was born um and then so so someone from the social services uh brings uh up joseph to them and they agree to foster him um he is i think two years older than jack and um he has a secret daughter or not a secret but he has a daughter um he there's some like juvenile stuff where like he almost killed a teacher at one point um and whatnot and it's a lot of you learning how this kid was not set up to succeed ever in his life until he met these people um and yet the past came back and um it did things um things happen um he's very emotional uh and it's sad and i cried um it was good <laughs> it was good uh i recommend if you like sad contemporaries about uh slice of life and whatnot very character-based books um I mean it's really short it's 183 pages and it's font size and this is heckin gigantic so like i recommend um really good right on a completely different spectrum we have neon gods um which i read in january it was in so in january i did four weekly reading vlogs right um because that's the type of vlogs i normally watch me myself so uh i decided it'd be a fun idea to do those um myself and there was like a week where i read like four or five katie roberts i went wild i had a good time it was a wild time i was playing stardew valley at the same time um neon gods was my favorite one i rated it five stars i think it was my fa first five star of the year which is wild right um that one is the persephone and hades retelling right um where basically her mother is gonna force her into a marriage with zeus and whatnot um but she's heard bad things about zeus uh he's done a lot of things um questionable things about his wife cough cough uh and also he's like his eldest is the same age as her like type thing like he's much her senior right so she decides to run away um and ends up in the underworld uh and whatnot to, to try to save herself uh and so Hades and her make a deal where they will kind of uh have a public sexual relationship so that she is ruined for Hades or not Hades for Zeus <laughs> she's ruined for Zeus and then that way um it can also make it so people know that he's alive because people have forgotten that he exists and whatnot he wants also revenge on Zeus all this stuff um but like slowly they start I mean pretty fast they start having feelings for each other there's like a lot of stuff um Zeus may die in the end uh but it was a wild time it was good I really liked it my favorite Katie Roberts so far uh and it just has to go on the list okay um now the next one is one that I hate the title of but I understand why it's hashtag junkie um which is <laughs> I my mom's boyfriend really likes race cars he likes racing um he watches NASCAR a lot and I like to say the most I know about racing is from this book which is a gay romance where one of them drives race cars and is getting really into the racing scene um like there's a whole party where he is like actually getting photographed for like magazine covers which is like the cover of the book and whatnot um yeah uh so he has a best friend who's in this fraternity he's like head of a fraternity and whatnot um I think in like another series they met I don't I don't know uh, but they're like best friends um and both of them are presumably straight they've only been with women but I have feelings for the other one and so it's both of them experimenting not really experimenting but realizing their sexuality with each other things happen it is a beautiful I think about this book on a weekly basis at the least okay it's like 
Okay, it's like it's 500 pages long, but it's good. So I gotta read the second one ASAP. Um, because it continues their story, because the end of it is one of them leaving the other because of some hate crime stuff. Um, happens and he finds it too dangerous. Uh, is worried about the other one and whatnot to be in that situation. Yes, Miss Ivy. So, um, he leaves him and. It's, it's so good. It's so good. I just love it. Okay. I just love it. Um, I've read this one. This one was the one where, uh, the, in June, I did a bunch of reading, uh, gay books, right? Um, uh, vlogs. And this one was the one where it was a random number generator chose, uh, which books on my TBR that were yay, um, to read. Uh, I made like a whole spreadsheet and everything. Um, and this one was one of the ones, I think it was one of five at spectacular okay so good so good um the whole entire series is like race racing romances um i've read romances where racing is an aspect before i don't know why but i have um but like not like a main focus in the book and whatnot and also only one of them as far as i can tell is a straight romance and that is i think the third one uh who is the daughter of like a big head guy in racing industry um who helps train um the main character in this one um and whatnot and her relationship with this guy uh but as far as i know i think that's the only straight one in the whole entire series um anyways it was really good i think more people should read it um next up malibu rising uh is was this a weekend reading vlog it may have been who knows if so, it will be linked below because you can only have five cards up above. So like the podcast will be up there. But otherwise, literally every vlog and or podcast of the epi podcast episode that talks about these books will be below in a very long list. Okay. Um, so uh, this may have been a weekend reading vlog, possibly, if I remember properly, but it also became a podcast episode out of the blue. Um, and I loved it. Fuck McRiva. Okay, fuck McRiva. That's that's our sentiment about this book. Fuck McRiva. Um, I am currently rereading and annotating Evelyn Hugo for Fish. Um, I'm gonna like send it to Fish and whatnot. And literally the first time McRiva's name comes up, I say fuck McRiva. I like I I say I put in fuck there. Like, okay. Um, anyways, this was heartbreaking. Um, it's a book about uh the cycles of family um and how i guess it's kind of like this is about the cycles of how our parents affect us and how that affects our children and so on and whatnot um and it's fuck mcreva uh and all that fun stuff and how breaking those cycles and all that fun stuff especially with um the old sister Nina that's her name Nina um like there's like this whole thing where McReva would uh whenever him and their mother were together he would always have affairs he left her multiple times for a different woman all the stuff um and to the point where she drunk herself to death right and Nina gets to the point where her husband uh had an affair um and then he comes crawling back to her and he's like blah, 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 blah. very much like McReva every single time um and so it's very much of her like starting to like just accept his apology because like she doesn't want to deal with it and whatnot and then realizing no i don't want to consider continue this cycle i want my younger siblings to have good examples all this fun stuff and um she ends the cycle basically uh herself she stops that air she ends that her marriage um and goes off and lives the life she wants for herself uh for the first time ever really um and it's it's just beautiful it's just beautiful um her character writing is so good the last whenever the party starts that last bit freaking chaotic okay the way she wrote it was very chaotic um and very fast and snippy which makes sense because it's like a fast party like all the all these drugs are happening and whatnot so like it makes sense um but yeah good times um i don't remember the full name of the next one so i'm just gonna say aerosol and dante sequel um i think it's like discover the secrets of the world i don't know um something with water maybe 
I read the first one last year. I wrote a review for it. I posted that review on Instagram. And then the author saw that and liked it. And basically my review was something like, this wasn't for me, but I understand why it's so good and why people really like it. Three stars. The, it, and then I decided randomly to read a sequel because I thought it'd be really funny because Fish really liked the first one. Um, and uh, the audiobook was available on Lovey, so I was like, oh, listen to it. And be like, haha, I'm reading before you did. Which, like, I still get to do. Um, but also they get to know that they're gonna die because I was sobbing. <laughs> I was sobbing, literally sobbing in bed at one point. I was like, it was a time. Um, very emotional. Um, it's really good. Uh, the fact, was it in a vlog that I read it in? I may have been in a 24 hour vlog, one of the multiple 24 hour vlogs that I read it. And I think I made the sentiment that, um, it's been multiple years, a good chunk of years between the two books were written. So you can very clearly see how he's gotten better at writing uh, with more practice over time. Blah, 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 makes sense. Um, and whatnot. And how that made the character journeys so much more impactful for me. And it just, um, and it was so good. I <laughs> uh, loved it. And then the last one uh, is Magic Lies and Deadly Paws. Now, <laughs> If you're in the fish, you may be surprised that I rated this five stars because, like, I constantly complain about one side character the whole entire time. Um, still hate that side character. I I really hope she's not a main character in the second one. Uh, but this was, I recognize it's not a cozy mystery. I thought it was. Um, it's more of a fun mystery. Uh, I do like how it opens up with her killing people with pies. Um, you know, people who deserve, I'm just saying, people, there's a lot of, like, how she chooses the people who she kills with her pies and all this stuff, um, and whatnot. And I really like, because it makes sure, like, it's her way of proving or making sure that she goes about it the right way. Um, and also the whole sentiment that, like, technically, yes, yeah, she's killing the people with the pies, but technically the magic she makes the pies with is what's killing them. Like, if the wrong person eats the pie, it won't do it. It won't kill them. Um, and whatnot. So, you know, there's no way for it to go wrong. They have to, like, something, blah, 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 blah. right? Am I making sense? No. Um, the whole mystery aspect of, like, someone blackmailing her was a good time, except for that one side character. But I do like how that whole aspect ended. Um, there was a love triangle. <laughs> but the love triangle was, like, with the cute farmer boy, right? And also, um, the, uh, also the very politically minded university student who likes to buy her pies, um, who, who is a side character I don't like, I'm sorry, I don't like her, but, like, I did like the love triangle aspect, um, it was very good, uh, also, like, the whole aspect of, like, her realizing she has people, she doesn't have to be by herself and whatnot, um, for the first time since her mother, um, died and whatnot, um, and yeah. It was good. <laughs> That's it. Um, and that is my 10 favorites of the year. I'm going to uh, go. I don't know which videos are coming out next. It's a whole mess for December in my brain. Um, or whatnot. So there's like more finishing series. There's also like me trying to finish the reading challenges I have for 2023 in the rest of the time that I have. Um, and whatnot. So yeah, that's a thing. Um, and I believe that is it again. Every vlog or podcast episode I brought up is linked below in a very long list. Um, and the podcast itself, the YouTube channel, is up above in the cards. So, and with that, I'm going to go probably cuddle these dogs who are in my bed without me. So, until the next video. Mm -hmm.